Hello, welcome back. Today we are continuing our series on graphing rational equations, and we are up to step three. So if you have not watched the videos for step one and step two, go ahead and check those out. But today we are on step three, which is about using multiplicity to determine how your graph will behave at the zeros. Okay, that's a lot of words. Let's check it out. Okay, first, let's just remind ourselves of our process, right? We are graphing rational functions. We fully factored. We found the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and the zeros. And now we are at step three, use multiplicity to determine the behavior of the graph at each x-intercept. Okay, well, hilariously, none of the three that we have been working on actually involve multiplicity. So let's take a little leap over to a new visual aid. So here are three examples of a given factor, and we'll be able to look at what multiplicity means. This right here is what all of the factors in the graphs we've been working on look like. They're single factors that are not repeated. And so at a, a multiplicity of one, here's our, uh, when x plus one is our factor, then x equals negative one is our zero. And we can expect that we will pass through this point and continue in sort of the same trajectory we were on before. Now here, same factor, x plus one, but this time we are squaring it. And so that is considered a multiplicity of two. So when you're looking at a multiplicity of two or actually any even multiplicity, what will happen on either side of your zero, you will have the same sign. You will do what is called bouncing. So either you will approach this zero and then bounce right back up or you will be approaching this zero and then bounce right back down. So at an even multiplicity, you bounce. You have the same sign on one side and the other side of your zero. And finally, for a multiplicity of three or any odd multiplicity greater than one, you can expect to pass through your zero, but change your direction. So see how here we're kind of passing through and having the same trajectory or arc, whereas here we are passing through, but we are changing our direction. And that's the sort of the parent form of any cubic, right? It does that kind of change. So Multiplicity of one, we're passing through in the same trajectory. Multiplicity of two or any even, we are bouncing. We are not passing through the axis. And multiplicity of three or any odd multiplicity greater than one, we are passing through, but we are changing our direction. And that is a summary of using multiplicity to determine the behavior of the graph at each intercept. So we will take a look at that some more as we continue to graph rational uh, equations, rational functions. But there's your first taste of what multiplicity means and how we use it to predict behavior on either side of an x-intercept. Okay, keep working on this. Stay tuned for video number four, where we're going to take a look at the horizontal or oblique asymptotes. And as always, Keep mapping.